Today I'm taking you on a journey. I want to add some new skills to my resume during the summer. And after careful consideration, I have decided to learn Android development with Kotlin. No, but it was an excellent choice for me. And it's probably a great choice for you. I am an intern web developer and it's fun. But I want to switch in the following years. And as you can see, Android developers get paid twice as much. Plus, even if I won't work as an Android dev, the skills I learn along the way, like object-oriented programming or how mobile apps work, are excellent and can be used on other career paths. So to make things more interesting, I have decided to record all my learnings. I will give myself one month to create a simple live chat application. I don't know anything about Kotlin or Android, but I know some basic Java, how GET and POST requests work, and stuff about databases, so I'm not starting from 0, zero but pretty much from zero. So let's get to it and see how far I can get in one month. I am a VS Coder, a no-no for Android. So I will also have to learn a new IDE. I started by downloading the wrong version of the IntelliJ IDE. Then I uninstalled it and downloaded the right one. Then I realized that for an Android app I would need Android Studio. So I uninstalled IntelliJ and downloaded Android Studio. All I can say is it's been an hour and I haven't learned anything yet. But I think we have our IDE now. Here I made some plans. And a quick tip, effective learning is crucial for programmers. As we are working we have to extract information from huge documentations and put them together in our head. Which needs to be done quickly. What I have learned about learning the past years is that you have to have a concrete goal by creating a live chat application. Make a plan, only memorize the concepts, and then code, code, code. Play with every piece of code that you find interesting. And remember, these are my rules. Change them if something works better for you. Just make sure to have rules. My plan is the following. I will play with Kotlin as a programming language until I have the minimum required knowledge to build a straightforward app. I will build two simple apps and start building the chat application. I don't want to build a backend for the app. So I will also have to learn Firebase somewhere in the middle. Now let's finally start coding. I watched this two hour long Kotlin course on 2x speed. Not because I wanted to flex, but this is probably my 20th programming language course. And they are all the same, just with a different language. I wrote down the course's exciting concepts and opened the docs to read more about them. I also try to code everything. And I'm sorry but I have this bug where I have to highlight the things that I'm currently reading. So hopefully this won't get annoying. I read about null safety, classes, constructors, passing lists as parameters, higher order functions and so on. Then I created this command line calculator. I'm not that original I guess. And after around 6 hours I ended my first day. So far what I got from Kotlin is that it's fantastic. It's like Java but without the shitty parts. And I think that I can make my first app. So I found this course that I followed along and created this. Which can be called an app, but it was a challenge. Like I can't even get to the settings in my IDE. So for the zeroed app it was okay. Then I looked at another course that created a calculator. I followed along, but it was a pretty shitty calculator. You could only enter two numbers at once. So I decided to improve it. And a quick tip, always be as independent as you can when learning. I made it possible to enter multiple numbers. And I implemented a stack with this algorithm that considers that you have to multiply before adding and things like that. And here you can see the result. It's okay for the first step. I learned a lot and it made me proud. So great. And then I found this tutorial for a quiz app for my second app. So I followed along. Again, it's a shitty quiz app. So I wanted to improve it a bit. And I had to learn how to make API calls anyway. I found this API that returns a list of countries. And another one that returns an image of the flag of a given country. I can create a real quiz app with this. So I did it. But wow. It's not as easy to make API calls as it is with JavaScript. And I have to do stuff like encode and decode images. So it took me like one and a half days to figure it out. Eventually I made it work, but it was a pretty hacky solution. But as you can see, it works. It fetches a list of countries, randomly selects 10 of them, then individually fetches the flag of each of them and starts the game. 
So yeah, Android developers make twice as much as web developers because it's twice as hard to do anything. Okay, so the next step in my plan was to start the live chat application. And to be honest, I got a little cocky at this point. I thought I could finish in a few days. But you know there is this Dunning-Kruger effect. And I'm here at the moment, with enormous confidence but little knowledge to back it up. In the next few days, my confidence shrank all the way to here, because I tried to make navigation work, but I just didn't get it. So I had to change my strategy a little. There were huge gaps in my knowledge, like I didn't know what recycle views or fragments are, what it means to inflate a view and so much more. So I decided to just open the docs and read. Like a lot. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. I spent four days just reading, and I also learned some Firebase along the way. The learned is in quotation marks, because there wasn't much to learn. It was so easy to set up and work with it. I will definitely use it in my future projects. After four days of reading, I made the fifth and final project in Android Studio, Friend Group 52. I named it like this because I was talking to one of my friends about what app would be cool to make, and he had an idea about a social media app for groups of friends. It would work like a messenger group but with many more features. And I thought it was cool, so maybe I will continue this project in the future. I created the app with the code for the side router navigation included. First of all, I made the authentication work. You can now create an account, which will be stored in the database like this. You can sign in and be redirected to the main page. From here you can log out. You can also register with name, email and password. And if I refresh you can see that a new user has been added. I also store the users in the real-time database, so if a new user gets created while we are in the app, the UI will update. This looks pretty impressive, but Firebase does a lot of the heavy lifting. Here I have put together everything I will implement by the end of the month. I want to add profile pictures to each of the users. I want to display each user in a list here, and you can click any of them to send a message to them. And I want to improve the styling because it looks horrible. So I started with displaying a list of all users. For this I need to create a recycler view, which takes a list of users, and for each of them it will create a box like you see on Messenger. And one mental breakdown later, I managed to make it work. So now we can see each user that we can chat with. Next up, I made each user clickable. It will take you to a new fragment where the messaging will take place. We have to somehow store these messages in our database. So I came up with the following solution. Firebase generates a unique ID for each user, so the messages between two users will be represented by another ID. We will create it by combining the ID of the two users. Because I made sure that the alphabetically bigger ID comes first, each pair of users will have only one list of messages. And here you can see my solution in action.
I also implemented this feature that shows the last message for all users. This took me like a day, and I forgot to remove the unchanged listeners, which is not ideal. And because I was running out of time, and it wasn't obvious how to remove them, I just left it as it is. Now that we can send messages, all that's left is to display them and listen for changes. So to display the messages, we will need another recycler view. The catch is that we will render two different layouts in the same recycler view, because sent messages look completely different than incoming messages. And after two days of work, I did it. And at this point I only had one day left. I don't know how, but I still managed to add profile pictures to the app. So you can select a picture, which will be uploaded to the database and displayed in the UI. But because I was in a hurry, it takes a few seconds to load the users, and they don't get cached away. So if you leave this page and return, you will have to wait again. But they have cute dog profile pictures, so it was worth it. Now let's check out what I have created. I have cleared the database, so we start fresh. Let's create two new users. The live chatting part works, and I'm pretty happy about that. And somehow the profile picture part also works. It's not even close to being production ready, but I think I completed the challenge. I only learned for 15 days, because I was still working 2 days a week and I also went on a 6 day vacation. So safe to say that this could have been done in 2 weeks. I improved my overall skills as a software engineer and it was also super fun. I will keep sharpening my Kotlin skills in the future. The only problem is that now I want to sell my iPhone for an Android. I never thought that I would ever say this. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you in any way. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my videos and it also makes me really happy. Thank you for watching, see you next time.